Hey, thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. We have prayed that you'd be blessed by it. Uh, we want you to know, too, we believe that this is really supplemental uh, to your, your experience in the life of a local church. But if you're here in the Dallas area, we hope you'll come and join us and be with us for worship. We pray this blesses your life and you're drawn closer to Christ as a result of this message. Amen. Hey, it's great to be with you this morning. And uh, Justin and team, thank you so much. Uh, some of you, if you've been here recently, I talked about uh, this gal that I met about a month or so ago. We were talking about our mutual love for the arts and for uh, you know, visual arts and music. And she said to me that she has this um, experience that's called synesthesia. Uh, there was an article in the Wall Street Journal this week uh, about synesthesia. And uh, I know this because several of you sent me this article uh, to read about this and learn more about this. It's really interesting. Synesthesia is a, it's kind of a confluence of, um, uh, of senses. And this girl that I met, she said that when she hears music, she sees color. You ever heard of this? Uh, she'll, she'll hear certain notes and see certain colors. It's like perfect pitch, she says, but it's, she'll see blue and know that that's, that's, the, that's A, that's that's an A, isn't it? Or this song is in, in the key of G. I'm seeing orange. I'm like, really? Because you know, I, I don't experience this, right? Then you learn that there's all kinds of different um, synesthesias. People will hear music and, and they'll start to um, sense or experience a certain taste in their mouths. They will, they will see colors and start to smell certain things. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of synesthesia. Some of you here, you might, I was talking to a guy this week, and while I was talking to him, he says, he says whoa, 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 man, I just got goosebumps, what you just said right there. Wow. Um, does anybody experience that? Anybody get goosebumps at all? Yes, yeah, some of you. Like, that'll happen. Maybe it's a, um, just a moment, you know, where you're like, wow. Um, it happens for people. So all this to say, it's when you're so acutely aware, I guess, of your senses that, that something happens. And so we've, we've said this is kind of an apt analogy uh, when we think about the work of the Holy Spirit. We've been walking through a series called Inside Voice, and we've talked about really the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. We kind of snuck that in on you, a little heavy theology. But um, we're talking about how the Spirit works in our lives. Today we're going to see what Jesus says, two things primarily that the Spirit does. And I want you to turn to John 15. Go ahead and grab your Bible if you have it there. And uh, we're going to ultimately land on John 15. We're going to walk through a, um, a, a little passage here, not a whole lot. And then we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together here in just a moment. You heard Justin talking about it. Uh, the reason that we gather is because of the great grace of God. The grace is his love for us. You might have heard it's God's riches at Christ's expense. It's his unconditional love for us. What we've said about uh, the spirit is that he gives us a kind of, of spiritual synesthesia. Now, I don't want you to mistake that for, oh, cool, the spirit then gives me all these, all these really cool, you know, I start to see things and I, I start to experience stuff. Some people go overboard that way, wanting to have certain evidence of the Spirit at work. And we see uh, some really strange things that are not biblical. But uh, I do think that the Spirit, here's the point, the Spirit does allow us, uh, how about this, heightens our spiritual senses. So when the Spirit of God comes to live in a person's life, you start to see things differently that you did not see formerly. You start to see God in ways that you have not seen him. You start to see the world and you, listen, you see others in the way that he sees them. You start to love people in a new way. I was meeting with a man this week uh, whose name is John. Um, and we were talking, he's recently joined our church uh, just last Sunday. And uh, John was telling me a story about how he came here not long ago and he came to realize that uh, he was not a, a Christian. He, he had kind of grown up in church, but had never really given his life to Christ. And through our preaching, through his, his connect group that he's gotten involved in, he realized that he had never received Christ. And so uh, he, we talked about this, and, and he was explaining how, Jeff, I, when I come here, I, I mean, I just, I've never really wanted to come to church before. And now I've got this new desire to come to church. It's really weird. And then he says, and when, when I heard you preach, it's like you're talking to me. And then he says, and I go to my connect group, like these people, you know, I want to be with them. 
I mean, formerly I was always like skeptical about Christian people, and now I have this, this desire. So he's explaining all this to me. He didn't know exactly how to put words to it. And then he says this. He asked me this question as if to plead with me. He says, he's like, so tell me, tell me, this is not a phase, right? This is not like a phase I'm going through. And I said, John, listen, man, here's what's happened. And I started to tell him about how the Spirit had convicted him and revealed who Christ is to him in ways that he could not see, can I say it, or hear or smell previously. And now the Spirit has spoken in his life. He received Christ. And I told him, hey, what you did when you received Christ, you received the Holy Spirit. He lives in you now. He's changing the desires of your heart. That's why you long to be with God's people. And when I speak and you think I'm talking to you, that's the Holy Spirit. That's not me. And he's sitting there going, oh my gosh, that's exactly what's going on. I mean, just blown away. And some of you hear that story and you think, you know, that, that kind of describes me. Uh, I've experienced that before. And others of us here, frankly, some of us have never, have never experienced that before. Um, not unlike synesthesia. I mean, you don't hear music and see color. You don't see certain colors and smell something. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't see the world as God sees it. And some of us here, maybe in varying degrees, we're kind of skeptical about this whole thing of the Holy Spirit anyway. And then there's others of us who would say, you know what? I, I'm, a, I'm a believer. I mean, Christ, the Spirit, convicted me long ago about who Jesus is. And I've come to faith. And I, I'm a follower of Christ. But I don't know that I'd say that, you know, I'm acutely aware of the Spirit at work in my life these days. So let's talk about that. All right. Now, before we get to John 15, here's what here's what uh, Paul says. And to be real clear, in First Corinthians 2, he says that there's two types of people, what he calls the natural man and the spiritual man the, or the natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he's not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, simply put, he's saying, if you don't have the spirit in you, you can't see what I'm describing here, what the spirit is doing. You don't fully understand what's happening. And in a crowd this size and on our campus today, there are folks who are going, okay. I mean, you know, the songs, that's cool. Good songs about Jesus. Not really stirred by all that, but um, okay. But you're sensing even there. You're sensing a prompting. And by the way, the Spirit even now speaking into your heart. Today we're going to see how, how we shift from being a natural person to a spiritual person. Someone who connects with the, connects with the Spirit of God. And we're going to see that how, how He works not just in us. We've been talking about this recently. But how He works through us. A kind of spiritual synesthesia. When people see us, they start to see God. They see Christ. They hear Christ in the way that we talk, in the way that we relate to them, how we love them. Can I say it? They start to smell him. The aroma of Christ on us. They start to sense this person has something going on, not to our glory, but to his. So look at what it says in John 15. Here's Jesus speaking and he says, he says, but when the helper comes, this is verse 26, 27. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, he calls him, who proceeds from the Father. He will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, I want you to see this. He says, I will send. Check this out. Jesus is active with the Father. Notice how each person of the Trinity Pushes the other one forward. The son is exalted by the father. The father sends the son. The son exalts the father. The spirit exalts the son. What we see is this mutual um, uh, kind of exalting, pushing the other forward. We also see a mutual uh, submitting to one another in this dizzying doctrine of the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So let's talk about it. The things of the Spirit. Real simply, two, two points I want you to see today. Jesus says there's primarily two, two things that, that the, the Spirit does. And, he's, and he mentions them right here. We're going to jump to another passage or two to help us. But right here he says to us, first of all, the Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus to us. The primary role of the Holy Spirit is to, is to point us to Jesus. Now, this word testify, it's an, it's an interesting word. I think it's uh, the ESV says bears witness. I think the NIV says testify. It's a legal term. It means uh, to, to bring evidence, to attest to the character of someone, right? It's to give kind of a solemn, um, you know, uh, witness or testimony towards another person's character. 
an appeal to believe. What I'm saying is true. That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit points us and shows us, testifies to us about Jesus. So check it out. Previously, as we're walking through this upper room discourse, is what this teaching is called, Jesus says, hey, the Spirit is going to be with you. He's talking to his disciples. And now he says, not only is the Spirit with you, and the Spirit's going to teach you, he's going to remind you, is what we said last week if you were here. The Spirit... Um, he brings to mind and then he reminds. The, the Spirit helps us get it and then he helps us not forget it. If you were here last week. To remember what he's teaching, what he's taught us. The Spirit does that throughout our, throughout our day. The Spirit of God speaks to us, those of us who are believers. Well, now he's saying, he's taking it another step and he's saying, okay, the world can't receive or know the natural person, uh, understand or see or receive the spirit. But those of you who have, you, my disciples, you have. Now he's saying the primary role of the spirit is to point you to me. That's what the spirit does, testifies to us about Jesus. So I, I've got to pause here and ask you the question, is this true of you? Has the Holy Spirit convicted you, pointed you to Jesus. You say, well, I don't know. Like, what does that look like? The Spirit convicts us. The Spirit reveals to us, testifies to us that Jesus is the Son of God. It's why Jesus would say to Peter, hey, when he proclaimed, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah. And then Jesus says, okay, check this out. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. That wasn't your own mind coming to that. The Spirit has revealed that to you. And in the same way, I want to ask you, have you come to a point in your life where you've accepted Christ as your Savior? Even now, as I'm saying this, is the Holy Spirit convicting you? And if you've not yet received Christ, I want to challenge you today to do that. And we're going to talk about exactly how that happens. You simply, by faith, receive Him, what He's done on the cross for you. By faith, the Spirit is now testifying to you about Jesus. He does this as we preach His Word, as you hear the truth of the Spirit of God through His Word. We've said that, that the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to point us to the Son of God. And that's what He's doing, even now, in your heart. I want you to see the second thing that the Spirit does. The Spirit testifies about Jesus to us. Check it out. The Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus through us. This is now a shift in his teaching. He says here, you also will bear witness. And not just his disciples, but those of us that would come after him. This is also an imperative command. He's saying that the Spirit is going to use you to point other people to him. I love the story of the little girl. She's uh, with her dad. Uh, I guess it's nighttime. And they're talking. And she says, she's old enough to ask questions like our kids do. And she says, Daddy, so, so God is, is like really big. And he's, oh, yes, honey, bit, real big. Is God bigger than you? You know, in the mind of a little child, bigger than dad. And she says, oh, yes, honey, God is a lot bigger than your dad. He's really big. He created everything. She says, well, but God can also live. He lives in us. And he says, that's right, honey. And he's realizing she's learning, you know, in, in her little Sunday school class. And she, he says, that's right. God can live in us. When we ask Jesus to come in our heart, he lives in us. And she's trying to grasp this, right? And she says to him, well, if God is bigger than us and he can live inside of us, wouldn't he, wouldn't he show through? Yes, if we die to ourselves, right, submit to the Spirit, the Spirit living in us shines through us. And this is what Jesus is saying. The Spirit, yes, with you, but now the Spirit is going to be in you. I, I love what it says in John 16, verse 7 through 11. He talks about how this really happens. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, this is a... This is a shocking statement to the disciples. This is going to be good that I'm leaving you guys. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, here's what he says. He'll convict the world of sin or concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. 
concerning sin because they do not believe. So he's going to convict us, all right? Bring evidence, testify so that we'll believe. Concerning righteousness, he's going to convince us, point us to the one who is righteous because I go to the Father. And you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. He's going to expose sin. He's going to convict us. He's going to convince us. He's going to expose sin for what it really is. Already having been judged by Christ and defeated by him upon the cross. He says it's to your advantage. It's to your benefit. It's advantageous that you go. I love what J.D. Greer, pastor, said. He said, the spirit inside you is better than the spirit beside you. I could say it this, uh, this way. You know, Jesus being with him is great. Being in us is greater. And this is why the spirit comes into our lives, works through us. Now what Jesus is saying to his disciples and his words echo forth to us. Now... We will testify to Jesus through the lips and the lives of his followers. That's how people will know about Christ. It's through you and it's through me. So next week, uh, next, well, next month, not next week, but the next month in February, we're going to walk through a series that we've entitled Love Out Loud. And we're going to be teaching you how you can, sure enough, love others in a way that God's designed you. What does it mean to share Christ? How do we do that? And we can be trained and do a better job of that to share Christ with others. And a lot of us think, man, that's kind of awkward to talk about Jesus. We're going to help you do that because all of us have a particular style or a way that we can do it. And he's designed you in ways that he hasn't designed me to reach others. So we're going to be talking about in the days to come. But here's what's so cool. Greater things are we going to do than Jesus has done. Now, that's that's, that's crazy to think about. Now, I could argue, no, you're not, you're not the savior of the world. You're not going to do greater things. But what Jesus is saying is, listen, the spirit inside of you is better than me beside you. The spirit in you is better than me with you. Because as you go, even from this place today, as you go into your, your home, into your place of ministry, uh, parents ministering to your children, as you go to work, you're going to meet people, come across folks that I do not know and will never meet. It's true of every person in here. And you know Jesus, and you can, you can uh, be a witness for him. You can testify to him by the Spirit as he works through your life. Greater things will we do in terms of quantity, in terms of geography, into, into the lives of people all over Dallas and around the world because his Spirit resides in each of us. This is what Jesus is saying. You know, our staff gathers every Thursday. Um, Justin was talking about prayer tonight. We, we gather as a church to pray. We pray for you, and our constant prayer is the scattered church in Dallas and around the world on any given day, our people all over the nation around the world. And our prayer is always that we would each of you testify to Christ, that you would be a light in the world. That's the church on the move. We gather, but then we scatter to be the church that he's called us to be. Now, here's what I want to do. Um, we, we thought it'd be fun. We could have a hundred stories up here on the platform. But today, you may not know, today is across the nation. It's Sanctity of Life Sunday. And, um, and we wanted to highlight not just the fact that we are a church that that uh, really is for life. I mean, from the, from the unborn all the way to the dying and everybody in between. We are for life. We talk about it this way. Our driving narrative is living life on purpose. And, and we want to love people the way that Christ has loved us. Now, the minute that we start talking about the sanctity of life, uh, and you may not know, today, on this day, 44 years ago, Roe v. Wade took place. Since then, uh, there have been about 60 million abortions. And I know that in a group this size, statistics tell us that one out of every three women have had an abortion. And so I want to say this as we start, that we, we are grateful for the grace of God. All of us have made decisions that kind of haunt us, and sexual sin is Satan's easiest door to shame in our lives. So none of us are better than others. We all are sinful to the core, but we all can relate to decisions that we've made in the past, perhaps men and women, all of us, uh, that have impacted our lives. So our hope is not to bring shame, but to bring hope and grace and love into your life today. But we thought it'd be cool 
to combine that thought, that idea, with a great story of how the Spirit has prompted one of our members to establish a ministry that's impacting really thousands upon thousands of people. Her name is Jess Barfield. Jess is uh, a member of our church, and she and Blake, actually, uh, you guys come to this service, don't you? And this your do. your time. Um, Jess, welcome. Let's welcome Jess. She's okay. going to talk with us for a sec. Have a seat. Thank you. Um, you have two boys, two little boys. Two little boys. Remind me their names. Yep. Henry is three and Wade is two. Yeah, there you all are. And there's Blake. Yeah. You're out in the woods, something. Yeah. yeah. Is this out, Thanksgiving? Uh, or, yeah, we're yeah. out at the farm. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you to all of our children's care workers. I'm yeah. sure you know who my son is. Ah. So thank you. They're so thank cute. So fun. They're laughing because they know him. Well, hey, um, tell us. Uh, so. Yeah. Tell us about Stand for Life is what it's called and how the Spirit prompted sure. you to start this ministry, all right? Yeah, so about 18 months ago, uh, God used the Holy Spirit really to change my life, um, kind of every part of it. And uh, so if I can give him any glory from doing that, I'm, ha I'm always excited to do that mm -hmm. for his glory. Um, summer of 2015, you might have remembered... Uh, in the media, in the news, on your social media pages. You might have remembered uh, the undercover Planned Parenthood videos that came out in the summer of 2015. And really those just, those showed the atrocities of abortion, just what it looks like. And, and it really shook me. Uh, and, and God started using those videos to speak to my life and say, you know, I want you to get involved. And I was, I was the first one that had all the excuses. You know, I, my kids were too little. At the time, they were still both babies. My kids were too little. I owned my own business, didn't have enough time. I didn't want to get involved, didn't want to be judgmental. Mm. Uh, so I had, all, I had all these excuses ready. And God said, no, this is for you. And so one day, uh, driving back from my grandparents' home in the Hill Country, it was a miracle, and both of my children fell asleep at the same time in the car. <laughs> And Does a miraculous move of the spirit? Yes. Yeah, you well, recognized it? As yeah, such. you guys know. And um, so it was a miracle, and I, it was quiet. And God spoke so clearly in the, in the quiet. And, and I said, okay, God, I'll listen. What do you want from me? And he said, this is what I have for you. And it was so clear. Uh, and I said, okay, what does that look like? And um, never had a vision before, never had one again. But the Lord gave me a vision of this filter, which is a filter that goes over a photo, and you might have seen it on social media. Uh, I posted this on my personal social media pages the next day and just said, uh, with all the love, with all the grace in my heart, I believe that we are all made in the image of, of God. And, uh, um, and I want to say that, and, and as a believer in the church, I want to, I want to be the first one to, to speak up, but, but also in the, same, in the same breath, speak about God's grace. Amen. So, yeah, it was really love that prompted you. I, I get that, that you probably hesitated because we've, we've all seen a more, uh, gosh, kind of a more hateful mm -hmm. kind of approach. Sure. And um, I know that's not your heart. So you were even hesitant there. Right. But you felt like, nope, we're going to do this and it's going to be grace that drives us. It's going to be life uh, to all and love to everybody. So tell us what... Um, I follow Stand for Life, and, and it's just inspiring and awesome. What yeah. has happened? What's going on? How are you seeing now the Spirit at work as you seeking to testify mm -hmm. uh, to Jesus and what He's done? So since that day on August 8th that I posted this image, uh, since that day we've shared it. It's, it's grown into its own nonprofit and its own movement. Uh, we've shared over 650 stories uh, of people choosing life, of uh, adoption, of foster care, of how to serve women and families in need. Um, all stories that just point to the goodness of God. And uh, just last year, I said this with no pride um, for us or the team or, or myself, but all just to the glory of God, that last year in 2016 alone, we reached 17.5 million people on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're now the world's largest pro-life Instagram account in the world. And uh, <laughs> because we're not a Christian organization or a church, you know, we we're, um, have a lot of people that follow us that normally wouldn't follow a church or a Christian movement. And so uh, we've got people from all, all walks of life, all beliefs um, that are following us and engaging in these stories. Yeah. And these stories are just an in introduction point to uh, the fact that every single life has value, unborn and born, and, and that there's grace upon grace for every single life. So good. So yeah. good. So how, how might we get involved? People are here yeah, in our you can, we've got We've got a booth downstairs. Um, our whole team is here. We'd love to talk with you about how, if you want to get involved, you can share a story, uh, you can support. Um, we're, we're growing faster than, than we can keep up with and it's all because of the Lord every day. We're just asking him to, to take us where he wants us to go next because so it's all his idea. 
Amen. Hey, yeah. let's do this. Would y'all join me? I want to pray for Jess and for staying for life. Okay, let's do that. Lord, thank you so much for Jess. I praise you for Blake, their family, and how you, uh, how you just prompted her in a moment uh, by your spirit. And then it birthed this, this thing that you're doing. And Lord, we know that every one of us, uh, we may not have a similar story, but we are, are open, God. That's, that's really what we want to say to you today. We listen. We're listening to you. Or maybe some of us need to be more disciplined in listening. You spoke to her in the quiet. And Lord, help us to be disciplined, to get quiet before you and and allow your spirit to speak to us. But we pray for Stand for Life. God, I pray that with all who've been impacted, I pray that you would just tenfold um, make this, uh, allow this ministry to explode and to be really a global movement of people who are for you for life that you have created. Thank you, God, that the number of abortions uh, continue to, to decline through the work of Stand for Life and so many others. We thank you that um, there's a voice that's coming to this. And thank you that we can do this out of love, out of grace, not condemning, but pointing people to a saving grace found in you. So Lord, bless Jess and her family. I know that ministry is not easy and, this, and the evil one would seek to attack. So I pray for protection around her heart and joy in the work that she's doing. May we be a church that is for the lives of every person uh, from, from the unborn to the dying and all in between. Mm-hmm. May we point them to Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jess. Hey, let's give her a hand for helping us today. Awesome. So, so good. So here's what I want to do. I want to challenge you on this day. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for you. And uh, in the common study, as you head down there, you can learn more about Stand for Life. You can also learn about Thrive. It's a women's pregnancy center that is here in Dallas that we're involved in. Um, and they help with women who uh, need sonograms or, or uh, really need to walk through the, that challenging season of an unplanned pregnancy. We also have uh, Belong. Some of you know the Timbrels, um, Amber and Dylan, uh, a ministry that is really around adoption and foster care. Some really cool stories that are coming out of that that we want you to be aware of and know about so you can learn about that as well in the commons. And then um, Leslie Kibbe, Rob Kibbe, some of you know them, young adult teachers, have had a ministry for some time, a small group for women who are walking through issues of infertility couples that are going through that together. It can be such a challenging time. This past week, we had um, young lives that met here on Wednesday night. I know this. Stacy was holding babies of teenage moms uh, at Lake Highlands High School who come here for young life. And we take care of their kids while they get to hear about Jesus. And so I say all this sounds a lot like I'm kind of preaching the announcements, but it's because we want you to act. We want you to do something. It may not be in, in any of one of these ministries, but we brought Jess up here just as an example of how the Spirit speaks into a life of a person and then we obey. And then we testify to Christ by the Spirit in us as He has spoken to us and now through us. And so here's what I want to do. All of this begins as we seek to embrace the grace of Christ. We've sung about it, grace to grace. And it was grace that led Jess to this ministry. It's the love of God in us. And all of this starts at the cross, reminding us of what he's done. You know, we've said that the spirit, Jesus said, the spirit of truth will teach you all things. And then he's going to remind you. He's going to bring to your remembrance, is what he says, the things that I have taught you. And today we're going to pause and remember the greatest thing that Christ has done for us. The one thing that he calls us to remember over and over and every time we gather. And that is that he died for us on the cross. So we're going to do so. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper. If you've received Christ, you'll know that this is where we say again, I remember that Christ, the bread representing his body broken for us, for you, the juice representing his blood, shed for you upon the cross. And so I want us to pray as we enter into this time. And then um, our ushers are going to come and serve us. And so would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we enter into this, this sweet time. Lord God, I pray that you would use this time not simply as some ritual or um, uh, a single moment in time. But you would bring to remembrance 
what you have done for us. And even more than just the historical moment upon the cross that set it all in motion, that you would remind us of how you have set us free from sin that has so easily entangled us. I pray for those who are walking through uh, a season of shame. Maybe it's sin that you uh, cannot overcome and you feel defeated. Know that Christ has taken that upon himself. For some of you who don't feel the love of God in your life, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because of the cross. So as you partake of the bread, this juice representing the blood of Christ, remember, 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 you are completely loved, fully forgiven, totally accepted by him. Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you for taking time to watch this sermon. If you would like more information about our church or following Jesus, please go to our website, pcbc.org, or contact our church offices. We hope to see you next week at church.